how image formation works with this single lens setup. Uh, when I was thinking this through, I thought I could actually demonstrate uh, how a very simple telescope is put together. This is sort of how it was invented. Um, and pop, uh, contrary to popular misconception, telescope wasn't invented by Galileo. It was invented by a lens maker. Galileo is the one who popularized it. Uh, the lens maker wasn't using it for astronomy. Galileo was the first one to use it for astronomy. Uh, and um, you can almost, once you see how telescope works, you can almost imagine how someone might accidentally invent it. Um, so I think I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and uh, make my video large spotlight for everyone. Um, because uh, what I'm gonna do now is more of a demonstration than anything. So for the demonstration, you are going to see you are going to see some views of these um, optical elements. I have this uh, 50 millimeter focal length um, lens that's gonna be serving as my eyepiece. And in our context, our eye is this electronic eye of the camera. And it's on a setting where it uses a fo uh, fixed focus. So as I do things to it to make it blurry, the focus here is not going to change. It's always going to be set up to uh, be focused on the uh, something that's where I am. And because it's got such a small aperture, that also happens to be reasonably decent focus for far away, like uh, the cabinet over there. So I'm just going to leave it at that focus and let it be. Um, so this is your our eyepiece that you're gonna have in front of the lens in a bit, uh, in front of the camera in a bit. And I have a few different objective lenses. And, um, and once I place the eyepiece there, you won't really get to see these objective lenses in sharp focus. So I'll just show you some of them. This is the 300 millimeter um, objective lens that I'm gonna be using shortly. And this one, um, I don't know what focal length it has. It's one of the random lenses. I actually don't know what system it comes out of. It's, uh, um, so, uh, but I'll use this one of the times. And uh, I just pulled this one. I didn't actually try this uh, before the session started. I think this is also gonna work. This is a, a hundred millimeter objective lens. So between these two, um, 300 millimeter and 100 millimeter, this is going to give you a bigger overall magnification. Um, and, um, and this is gonna give you a smaller mag overall magnification. Um, so, okay. So with that introduction of the optical elements you will see demonstrated here, I'm just gonna move this uh, fill light away because <laughs> it's in the way and um, move the eyepiece in front of the camera. So for most of this demonstration, this is just gonna cover the camera entirely. So your view is going to become very blurry soon. Uh, there's nothing wrong with anything here. It's just that's how it's supposed to be. That's how you position the eyepiece if you're trying to uh, make a, a makeshift uh, telescope. Okay, and I want this eyepiece as close to the camera as possible. You can kind of see what's behind the lens. Uh, it's a super blurry. <laughs> so you might think, what's that doing there? Like it's not doing anything. I'm trying to position the IP so that um, in the rough center of the whole thing is the um, the blurry brown thing. That's the periodic table of elements that's uh, right up against the wall over there. And I'm gesturing, and I think you can kind of see the blurry version of gesture, so I'll keep gesturing. So um, let me start out with my biggest lens, uh, the one that I said that I, it's pulled out from some random location. I don't know where it comes from. So operation of telescope is really simple. It's two lenses in a line uh, at, a, at the right distance. So um, the way if you are handling these lenses yourself, the way you would do it is you would have the eyepiece just right in front of your eye so that um, through that eye, you see just the blurry things and you just move this in front of your eye uh, in the move closer, farther at some right distance. The things that you see through the objective lens, you will see it start to see it sharply focused. 
So uh, there it is. Oh, sorry, I'm holding in a very awkward way. <laughs> Let me hold it this way. Um, yeah. So this is a kind of a simple telescope operation. You can, um, if I, if my hand were more steady, you can almost read uh, what's there. And um, yeah. Uh, let me see if I can have it so that you can at least read one of the elements. And once you can do that, then I will move on to my next objective lens that might be better. Okay, okay, I think I have a focus right now. So it's upside down. So you'll have to turn your head upside down to actually read it or just imagine it being upside down. I think in the center, the element there is, uh, use both hands. My hand arm gets tired. Um, what I had in the center before was, I think this was it. Does it say CO or CU? If it says a CO, it should be cobalt, but um, cobalt is heavier than this, so that can be cobalt, right? Um, mm. You know what? Let me change my lens uh, so that. I can see better. Does it really say CO? Anyways, uh, I'm. it's the one next to, I think Ni nickel, hopefully. And is the one next to the copper CO? Well, let's give that a try. So I'm gonna um, use a different lens. So this is my, so you can't read it now, but it's the 300 millimeter focal length lens. Um, it, it, I, this is longer focal length than, the other lens I was using. So it'll result in a greater overall magnification. Once I position this uh, in a way where it, um, it um, uh, sharp, forms a sharp focus. Yeah. So let's see here, ah, there it is. Yeah, the image is a little bit larger now. It's easier to see. Uh, it was a CR probably, I, sorry, I'm not a chemist, so I don't know. Well, no, 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 that, oh, cobalt. I thought cobalt was he uh, heavier than that. Hmm. Those look like a CO. Okay, so um, that's cobalt and, is that NI or NL? I can't tell. And, that I think definitely see you. Uh, that should be copper and C and um, probably zinc. You know what? Let me actually look up table of um, <laughs> table of elements before <laughs> I go too far um, um, saying wrong things about elements. So I'm sharing my screen again. And let's just look at periodic table of elements. Um, I am a physicist, not a chemist. I don't have the table memorized. So uh, wait, this one does. And, okay, so CO, NI, CO, GN was right. And I guess, it's, yeah, that is cool. Okay. Um, I guess this entire row was actually heavier than I thought. So the, the kind of cobalt that I'm familiar with is cobalt 60, which has a history in physics as a way people figured out parity is valid. And it's cobalt 60, 60 is the mass number. If 27 is the atomic number, then that's about right. So, okay. So cobalt, nickel, uh, copper, zinc, <laughs> that's what they are supposed to be. And, um, and, you know, let me just stop sharing the screen and move this eyepiece away. So without the telescope or with what some people might call naked eyes, there's no way you can read that. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can zoom in on your own screen all you want. The camera simply does not have that resolution to have captured those letters. But with the use of telescope, you can barely read it. And that's uh, in one of the ways how we use telescope in astronomy and other places. So um, I have one more objective lens that I haven't tried. So let me just uh, uh, position this eyepiece and try that again. So the eyepiece is once again, right in front of the camera. 
Um, you see all the blurry stuff. That's kind of what you would see if you have a magnifying glass just right in front of your eye. Um, so, so uh, just so that you have a point of comparison, this is the 300 millimeter focal length objective lens again. And I'm just gonna uh, put it somewhere here to look at um, the same letters again. Cobalt, uh, nickel, copper, and zinc. And then I'm gonna switch this out to a hundred millimeter focal length um, objective. And you are going to find that the magnification is much smaller. So the distance between the lenses that will make it work also changes. So this will be, this will come much closer to the eyepiece than the other lens was. So the overall area it covers will be larger, but um, okay, so it's about this distance where it all uh, it forms a sharp image. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, I can really read it. Maybe if you took a screenshot and zoomed in, maybe you can read it. I don't know. Uh, one thing I will tell you that if you take a screenshot of this and compare the um, the other one, the size of this image should be about one third of the other one because that's sort of how magnification formulas work out. And, and I guess the one last thing to show is uh, something that you here talked about in the textbook. Um, and we are in a good place to uh, demonstrate here. So with this lens, you don't really see it. And this is one of the benefits of multi-lens arrangement like a telescope like this or microscope, which uh, I guess has no application to astronomy, is that um, you can, um, so within the portion of this lens you see, it, uh, you see a relatively distortion-free image. And that's good, you don't, we don't want distortion. And, um, but this uh, particular arrangement, it's also not, um, it's got weaknesses. The lens I'm holding, it's relatively small lens, meaning it doesn't gather that much light. Um, so in terms of light gathering capability, it would be much better to have this larger lens. And with this larger lens, this large low quality lens, you see some of the defects that can affect uh, uh, optical quality of things that you view through lenses, telescopes negatively. So in this identical arrangement with this lens. So this is what I hope you are seeing. So I positioned it at the distance where things would be in focus in the middle. And you have two different things going on around the edges. Um, both around the edges, both uh, things are not, not in focus. And, and they are also distorted. So, you know, the, the periodic table, it should be straight line and it's not straight anymore. And, um, and this, uh, in one way, it relates to what your textbook mentions. Your textbook mentions um, a spherical aberration. And spherical aberration is basically an error that comes up from the teles the lenses being of wrong shape. Um, the correct shape for lens of all size to be is a parabolic shape. And, oh, wait, let me just let the light. The correct shape for the lens to be is parabolic shape. And when it's not, then, um, then in the middle where the, light rays that form these images are, uh, these images are uh, close to what's called the paraxial, the, the kind of spherical approximation is fine. And you see an image that's of an acceptable quality, but as you go farther away from the center, the images get worse. So, so when your textbook and the slides talk about spherical aberration, it's this distortion that they are referring to. 
And, uh, and I think this lens has other issues. Uh, I, again, I don't know where it comes from. It's possible that this is designed to work with uh, something else. Um, so it, this might be the right shape to fit as a cover for something else. And I'm not doing that. I'm just uh, using putting two random lenses together. And there could be another reason this, what based on the amount, I would have thought this, would, this is a good lens, but doesn't function as well because I'm not using it in the way it's designed to be used. Um, these two, wait, uh, these two random lenses. So in terms of teles this uh, makeshift telescope performance, it's uh, this combination that performs best. 50 millimeter, um, 50 millimeter uh, focal length eyepiece and the 300 millimeter focal length objective and the telescope magnification formula, it'll tell you that the apparent magnification you should get from this combination is times a six uh, in terms of the angular size. And that's what you see here. You can kind of imagine, you know, take a screenshot of that periodic table there, and do as best as you can, you know, figure out what one square element is. And when I put this back on, and set up the telescope. And you compare those sizes. It should be about times six, uh, maybe with a little bit of a discrepancy because um, I may not be focusing right at, the, right at infinity. But this is basically a telescope. And so for um, like an admiral's telescope kind of uh, long tube thing, what you are doing is um, you are covering up all this, co covering this in tube so that you don't see all the other light that's uh, distracting. You only see the light that has gone through the objective and then through the eyepiece. But um, in terms of just seeing how the optics work, you don't need to block them, like holding it by hand like this works. And, you know, if we had an in-person lecture, I'd pass out these lenses and you can try this for yourself. But lacking that, um, this <laughs> kind of demonstration with the webcam is the best I can do. And uh, I've done that.